Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Momming with Migraine. My name is Jen, and of course I have migraines, but I also have a thing called dysautonomia, or to be more specific, it's called POTS, Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. Today I had this whole outline planned out for you. I was going to start a four-part series about migraine auras and what they're like and what the four different types are, but my dysautonomia is acting up so bad that I really just didn't feel up for it. So instead, I filmed the POTS episode that happened when I got the camera out, and now I'm thinking I will go ahead and put on my makeup while I tell you about dysautonomia and POTS and the stuff that you're about to see in this clip right here. <sighs> Air hunger. Holy crap. So I'm sorry to jump straight in with that. Now that I took my little nap, I am feeling quite a bit better. I'm going to go ahead and put on some makeup and talk to you about dysautonomia. You get diagnosed with POTS if your heart rate goes up by more than 30 beats per minute when you change position from laying down flat to standing up. The diagnosis process for POTS is pretty crappy if you have it, but it's not very invasive, thankfully. The test is called a tilt table test. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a tilty table. You lay down on the table, they strap you down so that if you faint, you don't just collapse on the floor, and the table automatically raises you up. They insert an IV just in case you faint so they can pump you with fluids, and then they also put on a blood pressure cuff and a little heart rate monitor on your finger. If your heart rate goes up in the absence of a drop in blood pressure, then you're diagnosed with something like POTS. My understanding is that the alternative is that your blood pressure drops and your heart rate doesn't go up by that much, and that would be classification of orthostatic hypotension, and I have that sometimes as well. I heard that a lot of patients with POTS do have pretty low blood volume, um, about a third lower than the general population, so a lot of POTS patients do suffer with blood pressure problems like me. <sighs> Dysautonomia as a word can be broken down into dysfunction of your autonomic system. Your autonomic system is the system that takes care of everything that you don't think about. Things like your temperature, your heart rate, your blood pressure. As you just saw, when they're not being regulated properly, it can cause all sorts of problems. <laughs> Doing makeup and talking to you guys is actually a lot harder than I expected, so I'm going to go finish this up and I'll be right back. Lighten this up a little bit. Yeah. All right, last little bit, I'm gonna put on some tinted moisturizer for my poor flushed face. And I sound like a broken record, but I do totally have quarantine nails right now. It's pretty bad. I got them done in late February for St. Patrick's Day, which is why they're this nice like dark green color, or they were anyway. The dark green makes it incredibly difficult to get any color over it. I took off the color that I did have over it because I wanted to paint over it again, but then this video just started happening organically because I started feeling really unwell. So here we are. Since this is more of an impromptu video, I'm not going to try to be too thorough. In the future, I'm sure I'll do one with a list of POTS symptoms and a list of ways to alleviate them. But for today, I think it's most important that you see the attack and just see how they affect me when they get really bad. I guess this is more the acute symptoms, and I'll tell you more about the systemic stuff later. Well, within a minute, the next clip you're going to see is me on the floor. A couple things I want to tell you about first. Uh, number one, my husband is in the room next door, so don't worry about my safety. He knows that I'm in here suffering, and he knows to come check on me if it gets too quiet for too long. Another thing is I do have a POTS alert dog. He is not missing these alerts. He's just outside right now, so don't worry about that. He's never missed any alerts, and he's only missing this one because he's not in the house. I'll throw a card up here so that you can see what other tasks he's trained for for POTS. Today has been weird. Just wait for it. <sighs> Air hunger. I just got up to get something, and I feel like I went for a run. Hot. My hands are super sweaty. I am going to faint. Oh my god. <sighs> Try to move the camera down for you.
See what my pressure's doing. Pressure's good. My pulse is 132. A little high for just sitting here. And I feel incredibly faint. Interruption. Something I wanted to point out. Yes, sometimes I do convulse during my syncope. That's why we suspect that it's neurocardiogenic syncope. And I think it's a big part of the reason why I was misdiagnosed with seizures for almost two years before figuring out that this is probably a more proper diagnosis. Another interruption. Anytime I feel like I'm actually going to faint or I worry that I'm in danger of losing consciousness completely, I prefer to roll over to my side so that my face is facing the ground. The reason I do that is so that my tongue and any saliva that builds up in my mouth during the faint will come out of my mouth instead of going down my throat and potentially choking me. A wise man once said, palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. <laughs> I feel a lot better after my little nap. No way I'm getting up right now though. Last Friday I posted my most vulnerable video yet. It was real footage of me having a complex migraine and you guys got to watch me watch that footage for the very first time. Against some of my better judgment, I even included the raw footage in that video so that you could watch it too. I'm really glad that seeing those symptoms helped you because obviously it was not very easy for me to post and this one won't be either, but I'm excited because I know that that one was really helpful and now that I have this stuff on camera too, I know that this could be pretty helpful as well. I'll throw a card up here for the migraine one if you're interested in watching that. Of course, keep your eyes peeled. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you don't want to miss the Migraine Aura series that's going to be coming out soon. And if you like videos like this where I give you more of the in-depth view of my symptoms, please give the video a thumbs up. Since I've been laying here for a little while, I'm going to do a little potsy test for you so you can see uh, what happens with my change in position. First, I'm going to measure my heart rate while I'm laying here. I've been laying here maybe like... I don't know, just a few minutes, not very long. But I have this cool app. My phone has a heart rate monitor on the back, so it'll measure my heart rate now. It can't get it because my palms are too sweaty. <sighs> Dry things off. My heart rate is currently 74 beats per minute. 
just laying here. That's a pretty normal resting heart rate. Come with me as I stand up and measure my heart rate one more time. Quite a bit faster. Hundred and fifty beats per minute. So you can see the problem here. This is absolutely not a normal response for a young and healthy person who stood up from laying down. <sighs> that was a long sentence. I'm very out of breath. Uh, my heart's working very hard. My body feels like it's going for a jog. And metabolically, POTS patients do use about three times as much energy as a normal person. It is just about like we're jogging in place all the time if we're having an episodic day. And what's really crazy about POTS is it's actually reversible. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay back down and take my heart rate again so you can see that, uh, yeah, it does change right back. It's very bizarre. I'll stick you right back on the tripod so you can see me. Mm. Oh, I put my phone in my pocket, that's weird. <sighs> 78 beats per minute. So I'm right back to my resting heart rate. And what's kind of interesting about this is if I sit up, or at least I, I've noticed before, I don't know if it's repeatable, but I feel like if I sit up, I kind of end up at somewhere halfway in between. <sighs> I'm tired. It happens. Yeah, 116. As you can see, it's super related to my posture. When I'm laying down, I'm in the 70s. Sitting up, I'm in the mid 100 and teens. And then standing up, I was at 150. <sighs> the biggest issues during a POTS episode are fatigue and lightheadedness. There isn't really much I can do about the fatigue. Metabolically, I'm kind of stuck with it. But for the lightheadedness, a couple of things that I do is wear compression socks. I'm not right now, obviously. I'll put a weighted blanket over my legs a lot of times, especially if I'm trying to sleep. And I also do lay down flat on my back with my legs up, uh, propped up on the bed or up on the couch to try to get the blood back to my heart and my head. About 25% of patients are disabled and unable to work. Unfortunately, I do fall into that category. I think the combination of POTS and chronic migraines puts me at a big disadvantage to be able to work because I'm so unpredictable. And that's why it means so much to me if you guys subscribe. If you're able to subscribe to this channel and show me support, it's much more likely that I can continue to make free content for you, and that'll allow me to make a living for myself doing what I love to do, which is tell you guys about things, help you out with your symptoms, and just be a support network. If you appreciated me showing you the dark side, please give me a thumbs up. Again, I really appreciate it. As I mentioned at the beginning, my next set of videos, hopefully, if I'm feeling well enough on my next filming day, will be to get going with this Aura series, which I'm really excited about. I'm an atypical migrainer, so I do experience some form of all four types. So in the series, I'm going to talk about the common presentations, the less common presentations, and I'm going to go over exactly what my auras actually are like. It's one of the top questions that people ask me when they hear that I have auras. They're like, oh my gosh, what's an aura like? What does it look like? What does it feel like? And I will do my best to explain it. It's very hard to explain because there's strange sensations. But anyway, I'm on a tangent now. Looking forward to seeing you on the next video. See ya!